Okay, so dependency charts. Let's have a look at an example exercise. And um, in an exam, you would be given extra information because you'd be given the activity, the dependency, and the duration. But we haven't done durations yet, so we're just looking at the dependency types. So I might show you a table that looks a little bit like this, a list of activities and their dependencies. And your first task in the exam is to create the dependency chart. So find a, a scrap of paper. And the first thing we need to do is follow a convention and create a start and a finish task. This makes sure we've got no dangles, got no loops. Everything is going from the start to the finish. And now we can start to write down those dependencies. Uh, activity A doesn't seem to have any dependency, so it must come from the start. It's got to come from somewhere. And the same, activity B hasn't got a dependency. It comes from the start. And then we just work down the table. Activity C is dependent on activity A. A must finish before C can start. Now, it might say that activity C depends on A with two days lag or with two days lead. In this case, lead and lag's not mentioned. It's assumed to be zero. Activity D depends on A and B. So we write D down. We've got a dependency from A, from B. D cannot start until A is finished and B is finished. If one of them finishes, we can't start D, we've got to wait for them both to finish. Activity E depends on C and D. They've both got to finish before we can do E. And activity F depends on activity D. And that's all the information we've got in the table. But when we look at our dependency chart, we have got two tasks dangling. Task E goes nowhere, task F goes nowhere. They have to go somewhere. They go to the end of the project or the finished task. If you do this uh, in an assessed coursework situation, I'd expect to see a start task, a finish task. These have to be arrows connecting these. No loops, no dangles. And that's a simple example exercise for a dependency chart.